All right, now I know a lot of you became math majors because you didn't like topics that could generate controversies and differences of opinions and asking people to justify their answers. It sounds an awful lot like subjective ideas, right? But we have to, we have to jump straight into the teeth of a controversy in this video. And the controversy is about this function, f of x equals one over x. And my question is, is this a continuous function? And we all know what the calculus enjoyer says about it. That's not continuous, because if I draw the graph, I have to lift my pencil. <laughs> there has to be a better way of understanding whether or not this function is continuous. And as I promised in the introduction to this series of videos, to understand a function truly, we have to understand not only sort of its input to output relationships, but indeed the very nature of its inputs and outputs themselves. The sets on which that function operates are an inextricable part of that function's identity, that function's character. And so in this video, we're going to talk about what is it that might make this a continuous function despite the fact that we have to lift our pencil when we draw the graph. And to answer that question, we're going to introduce a topological notion of connectedness for a set that's gonna let us answer this question in a conceptually satisfying way. Let's take a look at how it works. So is the reciprocal a continuous function? Well, if I pick a point in the domain, an x naught, so now I just pick any non-zero real number, if you give me an epsilon, if you give me a certain uh, width of a strip in the horizontal direction, and you tell me you need to get this close to the output value 1 over x naught, by getting delta close to the value of x naught in the domain, I can always do that. For any epsilon that you give me that's positive, I can find a delta that's small enough that when I am delta close to x naught, my output will necessarily be epsilon close to 1 over x naught. So any point of the domain that you give me, I can show you that this function is continuous at that point using the epsilon delta definition of continuity. So why is it that we often don't believe in our calculus classes that this is a continuous function? Because we've been taught that continuity means not having to lift our pencil. Right? Well, just like love means never having to say you're sorry, it's a little bit of a white lie, right? We do have to lift our pencil to graph this function in its entirety. There's no way around that. But what is the reason that we have to lift our pencil. Is it a problem with the function's formula, which is what we usually think from our calculus brains, or is it a different problem? And what I wanna convince you of in this video is that it's a different problem. It's not the function's formula. It's not the fact that we're dividing by x that really creates the problem here. Really the problem is the domain. It's a set problem, not a formula problem. The domain of the reciprocal function is the set of all non-zero real numbers. But that set has a gap in it. Right? We've removed zero from the real number line. And in doing so, we have sort of sliced the real line into two separate pieces. And the reason that the function's graph is disconnected is because the function is only going to have a piece of the graph over a portion of its domain. And if my domain has two separate pieces, then of course my graph can have two separate pieces. Right? So don't blame the function. Don't blame its formula. Blame the set, the domain. It's a set problem, not a formula problem. So what kinds of sets are going to give us sort of necessarily, what, what sorts of sets are we going to expect to be able to have continuity, unbroken graphs over? If we can't expect that it's gonna happen on a set like the real numbers minus zero, what is it about this set that made it problematic? So we're gonna use the word disconnected to describe this set. Somehow this is a disconnected set because by taking that zero out from the middle of the number line, we've broken this set into two separate pieces. So any negative real number on one side and a, any positive real number on the other side are somehow separated from one another by our deletion of the zero from the real numbers. So how do we make that notion more concrete? Well, one way of doing it is to describe what we mean when we say that a subset of the real line is an interval. So I've used the word interval pretty casually up to this point um, because we've sort of had in our mind's eye the picture of an interval just being something that goes from A to B and might or might not include one of the endpoints, but necessarily does include everything in between those two endpoints. And it's that everything in betweenness that we're gonna use here to define what we mean by an interval. So a subset of the real line is called an interval. 
if whenever you give me an A and a B, and any C that's strictly in between A and B, then if my A and B belong to my set, then everything in between also has to belong to that set. So an interval is just a subset of the real numbers where any two different points that belong to my set imply that every real number in between those two points also belongs to my set. So an interval is just something that can't skip over any values in between any two values that it contains. This is a, a simple example of a more general notion in geometry called convexity. A convex set in geometry is one where if you contain any two points, then you also have to contain the entire line segment joining those two points. So a star shape is not convex, for example, but a circle is. And so this set, the domain of my reciprocal function, the real numbers minus zero, is not an interval. Because, for example, my set includes the number negative 1, and it includes the number positive 1, but it does not include the number 0, which lies in between them. So this set is not an interval, and that's one of the reasons why we might say that this is a disconnected set. The problem with this definition is it seems pretty specific. Even if it's not totally specific to the real numbers, at least it seems to somehow depend upon a choice of total ordering on my set. So if I don't have an ordered set, for example, if I'm using you know, uh, the xy plane instead of the real number line, then I might not have a useful notion of disconnectedness here. If we're going to define something topological, we should try to do so without respect to any sort of ordering or extra structure. We want to somehow come up with a definition that only has us talking about open sets or sequences or something that's purely topology. So how could we do that? Well, one way of doing that is to reinterpret this particular set, not as the real numbers minus zero, but actually as a union of two friendly neighborhood open intervals. The open interval from minus infinity to zero, union with the open interval from zero to infinity. This is a slightly more convenient way to understand this set from a topological perspective, because what it does is it sort of tells us, hey, this set is actually a union of two open sets. But those two open sets are somehow separated from one another. They separate the points in one from the points in the other. And the reason that they do that is that these two open sets, minus infinity to zero and zero to infinity, have no points in common. They don't overlap at all. So not only do I have two open sets that together describe my entire set A, these open sets are disjoint from one another. And so what we get is what I'm going to call a disjoint open cover of my set. So my set A, which is the real numbers without zero, is a subset of the union of two disjoint open sets. And also, this green set A has some points that reside in U1, so it contains some negative numbers, and it also contains some positive numbers. But it is completely contained in the union of the negative numbers with the positive numbers. So this is going to be my topological notion of what it means for a set to be disconnected. is If I have a separating open cover of my set, a disjoint collection of open sets of which my set is a subset of their union and which contains points in every one of those open sets. So that's the more general idea that we're going to have for connectedness. A set is connected if any time you give me two non-empty disjoint open sets A and B, if E is contained in their union, then E cannot have points in both A and in B if we're going to say that E is connected. E is disconnected if I have points in more than one of the non-empty disjoint open sets in my separating open cover. And so to be connected, we have to be able to say that anytime E is contained in the union of two non-empty disjoint open subsets, that must mean that E is entirely contained in one of them or the other. So there is a topological idea for what it means for a set to be connected. I don't have any order or anything sort of messy happening. All I have to be able to say is, what does open mean? And what does disjoint mean? Which is just a, a set theoretic idea. So this is going to be our topological notion of connectedness. But we now have two competing ideas over here. We have the intervals, and we have the connected sets, if we're living on the real number line. So in the next video, I want to tackle the question, is there a difference between these two different ideas of connectedness?